Okay, perfect. Welcome, everyone. Uh, it's 5.05, .05, so we're going to get started now. Uh, glad that you could join us for our fourth demo day. Can't believe it's been close to two years now that we've uh, we've been running the accelerator. Uh, quick introduction. I'm Gil Rosen, president of the Stanford Blockchain Accelerator. It's the first and only crypto native accelerator here at Stanford. Uh, I've been in the distributed compute space for close to 20 years, built and sold a couple of companies, it was GSB 2016 and 2023, and I'm also managing partner of uh, Blockchain Builders Fund. Uh, but within blockchain, I, I mean, I've been in the space since 2016, and I've been both like inspired by its potential, frustrated by its speculative nature. Uh, but honestly, I'm like more excited than I've ever been about how far the industry has progressed, especially within the Stanford ecosystem. Uh, and it, it's just been awesome being in a place here where I can support founders that have been driving this, uh, this sector forward. Uh, a little bit about the Accelerator. So the Accelerator itself is part of the Stanford Blockchain Club, which is run by uh, Sophie, uh, Bridget, and uh, Jay. Um, and they've, they've been absolutely amazing. Uh, so it, it's uh, run by Steven, myself, and Kuhn, who you'll get to meet momentarily. Uh, and it's basically like an alumni board and current students uh, that Kind of run its operations. We incubate about 10 to 12 Stanford student or alumni teams in each cohort over five months and help them with every aspect of building uh, transformational blockchain ventures that are kind of driving blockchain adoption. So we'll support with everything from need validation, product strategy, product market fit, tokenomics, cryptography, fundraising, et cetera. And to date, we've helped, I think, close to 50 teams now raise over 120 million. Uh, and over two thirds of them have like launched with customers uh, and, and revenues. Um, they, they've been funded by all the top funds as well. And recent Sequoia, 1KX, Dragonfly, Gumi, uh, et cetera. Uh, but you know, more importantly, what we love the fact that these teams don't just like build and raise, they actually like launch and deliver. And 60% of our teams launch and oppose revenue within six months of our program. Um, ultimately our mission is to incubate ventures that drive blockchain adoption to like overcome the frictions uh, enabling performance, scalable, usable, and interoperable blockchain applications. So you'll get to see a bunch of those today. Uh, but more than that, we're just grateful to build a really close-knit community of which you guys are a part of, which is why you're here, uh, for blockchain founders to support each other. Uh, so as we wrap up our fourth cohort, um, we've also brought a few alumni teams and, and other Stanford community teams uh, who've gone on to scale quite a bit. So excited to hear some of their updates. Uh, and lastly, if you are a founder or an aspiring blockchain founder and someone on your founding team is a Stanford student or alum, we urge you to apply to our cohort five that's going to start in January. Uh, we're going to share the application link in the chat. Um, and, and yeah, it's uh, it's an awesome program, as you'll see from these teams and all the other teams. And uh, we'd love to have you guys join us. So with that, uh, I'm going to pass it over to Kuhn, uh, who founded the Accelerator, uh, and Kuhn, want to give a, a few words. Yeah, thank you, uh, Gil. Um, all right. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Kuhn Peng. I'm the founder of the Stanford Blockchain Accelerator and uh, BASS. I also taught uh, the CE 246A, uh, the Web3 Entrepreneurship course at uh, Stanford last school year. And uh, yeah, I've been in the blockchain space since uh, 2017, where I played a multiple roles, like a developer, a product manager, project manager, a marketing lead, a founder, operator, and advisor. So quite some um, different roles and helped incubate and advise uh, over 40 uh, well-funded blockchain ventures. Um, over the summer of um, 2021, I uh, while at Stanford, I realized there a lot of uh, uh, startups, courses, and incubators, uh, but there's not much uh, crypto-focused founder community. That's why in uh, early 2022, I founded the Stanford Blockchain Accelerator as a crypto-native Web3 founder community affiliated to uh, Stanford. Uh, and Gil came on board as a mentor and then took on the uh, like leadership with me and is now growing to a really mature uh, program. To launch nearly uh, 50 Web3 ventures. And also wanted to connect industry thought leaders and uh, with the top founders from the Stanford blockchain ecosystem. Uh, that's why I founded the Bass Conference uh, this past August. I think some of you guys attended. Uh, it was quite uh, successful. 
Um, and uh, we had some of the best thought leaders, thought leaders researchers, and uh, professors, like co-founder of uh, Abish Hum, Stockwork, Cosmos, Celestia, uh, Eigenlayer, managing partner of uh, Dragonfly, Pantera, Electric Capital, et cetera, and some of the best founders from Stanford Blockchain. Uh, we had over 1,500 uh, registrations with uh, 800 in-person attendees and many other attended virtually. Uh, and also with an uh, um, accelerator, we were able to help team to uh, launch or go from zero to one ideas launch. I also wanted to help uh, students and give them more exposure to Web3. Uh, that's why I worked with other members of the Stanford Blockchain Club leadership team. Uh, to build a course last school year on Web3 entrepreneurship. And uh, and we launched a fall quarter last year and had over uh, 300 students uh, over, the, over the fall and the winter quarter last uh, school year. Uh, so definitely very uh, much looking forward to the demo day today and excited to bring all the community together to help Stanford uh, blockchain founders. And with that, I'm going to transition to uh, Stephen. Thank you. Awesome, thanks, Kuhn, and hi, everyone. Um, my name's Steven. Uh, I'm gonna be introducing the first set of teams uh, here quickly. You know, this is my first full cycle with the Accelerator. I am the alumni chair. A uh, part of this, I worked Coinbase Ventures and then Capital One Ventures and Google for some time. Um, and it's awesome to see uh, how fast these teams can can ship and like what, what exciting things they're working on. Um, so uh, I'll just be short and sweet on myself. Um, so the Zero Gravity team with Michael Heiner presenting is a group of uh, grizzled entrepreneurs and operators uh, with multiple exits inside and outside of Web3. Uh, they're building for a modular blockchain future with scalability and performance to enable on-chain AI. Um, that's kind of vague, so I'll let Michael explain it. Uh, Michael, are you ready? Yes, I am. Thanks, Steven. Thanks, thanks, Gail, and thanks, Kuhn. Uh, really great to be here. I'll share my screen. Okay, super excited to present uh, Zero Gravity. We are building data availability 2.0. Essentially, it's a thousand X better data, thousand X faster than dank sharding, thousand X cheaper than dank sharding for on-chain AI. So the current problem is that Web3 data is a thousand X slower and more expensive on Ethereum than it is on Web2. So for example, uh, you may not know this, but to store a gigabyte on Ethereum costs more than $60 million. It's cheaper on L2s and it's cheaper on Solana, but ours will be an order of magnitude even cheaper than that. And um, when you talk to many L2s, 70 to 90% of their gas costs are spent on storing transaction data on Ethereum. And so what's really the impact of that? Well, the impact is high performance dApps like on-chain AI, on-chain gaming, high frequency DeFi, and many other use cases can't really be built in an environment like that. And so just to give a sense um, of how that works, if you have 3 million concurrent users on uh, a, a system like OPML, which is an on-chain AI framework, it will require 5 gigabytes per second in data availability needs versus 1.4 megabytes that would be available through Dank sharding or Celestia. And so that just doesn't scale for high-performance uh, Web3 applications. And so that's where we come into play. And we're basically building the fastest and lowest cost data propagation uh, system. And so what we do is we chunk apart the, the DA blob. We then do um, validity proofs and KZG commits and then distribute them across different nodes on our storage network, which then enables a sense of horizontal scaling. And then our consensus layer, which is separate, does data availability sampling and also provides strong incentive mechanisms. And so with that type of environment, uh, we should be able to handle 20 megabytes per second per node. And if you scale that up to 250 nodes, you get to five gigabytes per second. And our consensus uh, mechanism will scale beyond that, of course, but this is a great start for high performance applications. And so what we're really trying to build is the most performant, the most secure, and the most programmable uh, DA layer that's optimized for AI. And it's essentially uh, significantly differentiated than anything that's out there at the moment, whether it's Celestia, EigenDA, Avail, or even Dank Sharding itself. We're working with a lot of really great partners on the layer two and layer one side. It's Polygon on their POS chain and also on their supernets. It's Arbitrum on their Orbi chains, Fuel, layer N, and various other L2s and L1s 
on the AI side and the ZK side, we're starting to work with uh, modulus labs and hyper Oracle as well as East storage. Um, and on the rollup as a service side, also chatting with Caldera, Altlayer, and recently got an introduction to Saga as well. So super excited uh, to work with these partners. Uh, we also work with a lot of really great tier one investors. Our seed's been 12x oversubscribed and feel really proud of all of the investors that are supporting us and are going to be building with us. And so um, also super proud of our team. I myself, I'm a second time entrepreneur. I started my career in technical product management and engineering at Microsoft, then switched over more to the business side at Bain & Company, and then worked for Bridgewater Associates. Afterwards, I went back to Stanford to start my first company called Garten. I scaled that up to 650 employees, raised 150 million in financing, uh, drove 200 million plus in revenue for the company, and then middle of this year decided to switch to a board chair role and to go into zero gravity full time. My co-founder is equally impressive. Ming, for example, spent 11 years at Microsoft Research, is a distributed storage expert. Uh, Fun is a MIT computer science PhD, AI and uh, systems expert, uh, also a professor at the University of Toronto and also holds two gold medals in uh, the Informatic Olympics. So that's a bit about us. Join us to make AI a public good via 1000XDA. So thanks very much. Uh, next up, we have Doug from Exhibits. Exhibits is building a decentralized GPU network on top of their team's cutting edge research into distributed compute. Uh, Doug was previously at QuickNode. So Doug, please take it away. Yeah, super happy to be here. Big shout to the SBA team for including us in this incredibly talented cohort um it's been an incredibly awesome experience for us and we we've, we've we've gained a tremendous amount as an organization so we're really excited to be here so we'll just jump right in um the introduction was perfect about exhibits uh and so like i said we'll just jump right in so you know the world is simply just cannot keep up with the growing demand for computation at the present and moving forward in the next few years studies show that by 2030 the total available capacity of data centers will cover just six percent of the total demand and so with this gpu scarcity that means that training and running complex ai, AI models will be prohibitively expensive limiting access to just a few uh, large tech enterprises and so Exhibits is the first ever truly accelerated decentralized computing network for affordable AI. We reduce the cost of training and serving large AI models by, by uniting GPU technology, um, uh, by united G uniting GPU resource globally and accelerating them. So our technology distributes computing loads over a large pool of GPUs and idle compute resources. And so in terms of acceleration, our superior technology enables weaker GPUs like 3090s and 4090s to achieve performance comparable to the famed A and H100s, thereby reducing the cost of compute up to 90%. And so when it comes to reliability, the high failure rate of GPUs is the hidden killer of AI businesses, causing training projects to have to restart from square one with enormous added time and costs, getting them to market too late. Uh, and so addressing this technical challenge, Exhibits has, uh, Exhibits has developed ultra high availability, uh, availability training technology that improves system stability by more than 50%, significantly enhancing the efficiency of resource usage. The core technology uh, stack of Exhibits is shown in, on the left uh, with our in-house research, Mark and Rod. So I'm Doug, as as Stephen said. Uh, my my uh, origins come from QuickNode and Beluga CDN. Uh, brought uh, QuickNode from zero to six million dollar run rate in about thirty months, and Beluga CDN. We bankrolled uh, QuickNode with the uh, acquisition to Komodo from that organization. Um, our founder, Dr. Zachary Bright, has over 15 years of experience in the field of cloud computing and blockchain. He holds a PhD in computer science from Tsinghua University and Princeton jointly. Dr. Lee was a portfolio manager at China Merchants Bank in Hong Kong and managing director 
of Singwa Holdings and professor at the same institution and also served in the Council of Economic Advisors under President Obama. Uh, Xander Wu is the builder of supercomputing clusters for AI, ZK, and crypto. He was the former head of global crypto mining data centers for Bitmain. He also has rich experience in co-location and deployed and managed uh, 2,000 plus GPU servers in T3 data centers. So we have an incredibly strong team of scientists who are deeply versed in the cloud computing space and AI and blockchain technologies, and a business team that has thorough understanding of Web3, of the Web3 business model. And so we also have a strong advisory board. Our advisory board um, includes world-class AI and computing scientists, financial experts from Wall Street and the Web3 sector. And so on the supply side, our, our network is currently active with more than 60,000 GPUs servicing our customers. Members of our team are tier one brokers of NVIDIA, AMD, Supermicro, who have completed deals with worth over $2 billion for data centers and mining facilities and have experience inside organizations such as Bitmain and mobile operators. And because of our experience in building data centers, uh, we've kept our Rolodex warm and have grown it throughout the years of which we can we can procure, our, we were able to procure our initial partners. And so we'd like to just kind of illustrate advantages of Exhibits with the case study of a real client. Nebular Block is an AI and cloud computing system integration company. Nebular was spending over 147K monthly at AWS. And then when they moved to Exhibits, we saved them 71% on the costs and increase their performance by 30%. So who are we and why are our customers buying from us? Our, our ICP is AI and ZK, early stage startups to unicorns. Um, they choose us for two key reasons. One, we offer acceleration of training and inference. Um, and that results in higher performance and dramatic cost savings. We also have a we, we also have unique access to supply. And this means that not only do we have cost advantage uh, in, in the sense that, you know, we're not charging these multi-million dollar upfront prepayments, but also no painful application to process, to uh, application process. So anyone can gain access to these machines and get to market efficiently and quickly. And so we're currently creating the lateral space in AI building. As, as the industry unfolds, sectors emerge for more clearly and you know we're all great at many things right um but we find that we're all awesome at one thing and we do one thing really well like for example bit tensors they're a superior platform for rating and integrating models jensen is a superior verification uh platform while exhibits leads the industry in offering accelerated ultra available compute and we, you know, are born from Harvard University Innovation Labs. We're closely working and incubated by world-class universities such as Stanford and Berkeley. Um, and we're trusted by grant programs of, of leading cloud providers. And so, you know, at the moment we've raised 2.2 million for this round and we're open to speaking with investors interested in this round and, and also interested in our upcoming seed round, which will open in January of next year. Thanks very much. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Doug, for the awesome presentation. Uh, so next we have uh, Satori, uh, which is a ZK platform for trustless data stream processing. Uh, so Billy Bing is presenting. So please uh, raise your hand so I can promote you. Uh, yeah, can, uh, can I share my screen? Uh, actually make your co-host, just wait, there's one sec. And uh, yes, you should be good to go. All right. Perfect, can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. So we're Satori, uh, we're doing ZK uh, data processing. Uh, our team is uh, experienced builders in crypto and data infrastructure. 
My co-founder, Erdem, is an engineer with time served at Google, Amazon, and Salesforce. He also co-created Apache Arrow and Apache Drill and contributed columnar execution to Apache Spark. These are foundational tech in Web2, the backbone for countless open source projects used at virtually uh, every, every Fortune 500 as well. Uh, Hassan is a PhD engineer, also coming from a big tech background. Chuck, contributor, is a PhD engineer, authored one of Manning's first reference um, texts on Hadoop. I'm Ben. I have eight years' experience in crypto, most recently doing strategic investing at Abra. We're advised by renowned builder researchers with a track record for scaling up ZK development and pioneering uh, big data infrastructure. Uh, our origins really uh, go back uh, 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 probably uh, East San Francisco uh, uh, as our starting point. Uh, in 2022, this was kind of in the wake of the Mango exploit. We began a, a hackathon project that won first prize from a sponsor uh, and $50,000 grant for an on-chain risk management protocol. Um, but we encountered a critical issue this was around data. We couldn't get prices on chain without using a trusted Oracle. It turns out this isn't just, it wasn't just our problem, but something much more systemic. Developers can't access on chain data trustlessly today. Um, and it's something where this has been kind of the status quo for them to fall back either trusted systems or otherwise skip critical functionality in their Web3 protocols and apps. These compromises are the basis of so much exploit over the last two years. I think that's pretty self-evident. Um, we believe developers must and will process data trustlessly, and that's why we're building Satori. Uh, Satori is trustless data stream processing. It's the first platform of its kind to enable developers to retrieve, transform, and publish data without having deep cryptography expertise and without having to rebuild expensive infrastructure. This will be the first platform to trustlessly and scalably access arbitrary on-chain data from any chain and process it in a Turing-complete programming language. Our front end is comprised of a high level language with built-in primitives for data parallel operations. This allows developers to build concurrent ZK programs natively. No writing circuits, no backend customization. It's no compromise in terms of developer ease of use. So Tori handles the backend by distributing proofs across a decentralized network of provers. Our interpreter works as a light abstraction on top of folding schemes from the research thread originating from Nova. We've begun work on a proprietary PCD construction for processing data in streams. So ingest the data, the calculations, split the proofs into steps, distribute them in the network, collect the small proofs and fold them together. It's worth pausing to emphasize what this accomplishes. We're talking about folding in logarithmic time. The progression of Nova supernova, hypernova in the last year especially, has put CK scalability within reach. There is a breakthrough verging, and we are the team to implement it. In terms of R&D, our contributors, as I mentioned, are experts in data and cryptography. They are all PhDs, who, some who literally wrote the book on data infrastructure. In terms of engineering and implementation, our team has built Again, some of the most widely used production systems, speaking of Apache Arrow, Spark, and Drill, right? These are core internet infrastructure, you know, the undergirding of countless open source projects. They've accumulated over 20,000 GitHub stars and indirectly touched hundreds of millions, if not billions of end users. In building Satori, we hope to unlock more than just Web3 and we're inspired by possibilities for ZK in terms of enterprise tech, finance, and other areas broadly. Today, we are especially focused on the success of our Lighthouse partners. They're serving core use cases focused around data and DeFi. Let's dive into one of those cases. 
One of the top institutional state providers is interested in ZK proofs for data integrity in their client reporting. So here's how it works. When the staking provider generates a report, Satori helps calculate and prove yields, costs, and fees from on-chain data. Thus, the client doesn't have to trust just their staking provider, no. The client now has a cryptographic assurance. Every downstream user and dependency can benefit from accounting to front office. By the way, do you think they care about fee calculations in front office? Of course they do. Let's step back. Consider I've just given you a textbook example how ZK as a technology is a categorical improvement toward more efficient and transparent fair dealing. As someone with firsthand experience at a $30 billion traditional asset manager and then crossed over into crypto investing, I've seen the gaps. In facilitating almost a billion dollars in DeFi LP, DeFi needs better data processing ASAP and with partners to towards building it. Just in the interest of time, I'm going to skip close to the end. This is our roadmap. We are not yet raising. We plan to open a raise early next year. Today, we're engaging strategic discussions, especially Web3 partners interested in data processing and in data and computational integrity. We don't have a site yet or social media, but private docs are available on request. As mentioned, we're open to strategic discussions. Uh, I'll paste our contacts in chat. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. Uh, so next we have uh, Babylon, which I believe uh, just announced like today, raised uh, $18 million. So congratulations on that. Uh, so Babylon is uh, like uh, unlocking uh, uh, BTC, Bitcoin, to secure the decentralized uh, economy. So we're going to have the co-founder, Fisher Yu, to present Babylon. So let me promote you to speaker or co-host. You should be a co-host now, for sure. Should be able to present. Okay, great. Now I'm unmuted. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kong, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. My name is Fisher Yu. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Obelum. So let me share my screen with you. Okay, can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, cool. So at Bobbilon, what we are building is a protocol called Bitcoin staking. And before I dive into the technical details, I would like to just give you an overview of our team and our funding status. So Bobbilon was funded in January, 2022 by myself and Professor David Shea from Stanford University. Yeah, so we are actually uh, have a very strong uh, route from Stanford University. And our current team includes uh, eight engineers and three uh, marketing and community uh, managers and three uh, BD product people. So we are a very small yet uh, comprehensive and strong team. As Pum just mentioned, uh, just yesterday, we closed our most recent fund, uh, fundraising round. We raised uh, 18 million uh, led by Polychain and HackVC and uh, a lot of uh, strategic uh, invest investors and partners, including uh, Polygon Venture uh, from the Polygon ecosystem, Castle Island from the uh, Bitcoin community side, OKX from the wallet and uh, listing side and yet many other great investors. Okay, so that's the background. Then now I would like to talk about what Bobbilum actually is and what we are building. So in Bobbilum, our vision is to have a Bitcoin secured decentralized world. So what we do is basically extract the security the various type of security that Bitcoin provides and share it 
with the rest of the decentralized world, which is basically the proof of stake world. Okay, so our first Bitcoin security sharing protocol is called Bitcoin timestamping, which uh, allows the proof of stake chains to record the history of the ledger onto Bitcoin so that uh, the POS chain will be resistant to an attack called long range attack where the stakers unstake sell their, their uh, tokens for fiat and come back to an old block where they are still validators and create a fork. So we already launched a test net for our Bitcoin timestamping protocol in uh, February this year. Uh, we built our system using a Cosmos SDK and we have already integrated with all nearly 40 uh, Cosmos actions. But we are, but this timestamping is just one security property of Bitcoin, namely the, the proof of work. That when you put a timestamp in Bitcoin, the longer uh, the, the time, the more secure it is because of more work is added to timestamp. But this is relatively slow. So we invented a new protocol which works more directly with proof of stake system, which is called. Bitcoin staking. So what is Bitcoin staking? Think about proof of stake chains. Why proof of stake chains are secure? It is because you as a token holder, you pledge your token, lock it as a staking asset and become a validator of the chain so that you can propose blocks and vote uh, for blocks. If you attack the chain, your uh, token can actually get slashed so slashability is actually the core feature of a staking asset, okay? So what we do is basically we turn Bitcoin into a stakeable and slashable asset for any proof of stake systems without, and without this is without this very important, without any wrapping or bridging or sending your Bitcoin to a third party custody. The reason why I emphasize this is Bitcoin itself is not smart. It does not have smart contract. It does not understand any off-chain attacks. So for all existing utilities of Bitcoin, the, those protocols require the Bitcoin holders to actually give their Bitcoin to a third party so that they can have some utility. Then the use, then the Bitcoin holder is actually at the mercy of the third party to have their Bitcoin back when they want it. So. Okay, so what we use our uh, deep understanding of Bitcoin scripting language and the cryptography magic to turn Bitcoin into a first class staking asset without any smart contract on Bitcoin and without any uh, trust to any third party. So we, we achieve the following six properties for Bitcoin. First, slashable, which means if the BTC uh, staker attack the POS chain, if Bitcoin can get slashed. And we can we can also make it a fractional slashing so that only a portion of the Bitcoin is slashed instead of all, so that people feel more comfortable with this new technology. And we all, it is also trustless, as I mentioned, which means Bitcoin holders do not need to send its Bitcoin to any other people's wallet. This is also delegatable, which means Bitcoin stakers, if they don't know how to run a validator, they can actually delegate their Bitcoin to a professional validator a service provider, but which is not giving the Bitcoin away. It's just delegating the voting power to a validator. We also allow on-demand unbounding, which means it's like when you save a uh, deposit your money to the bank, you can get it back anytime. So we can we also support this for Bitcoin. So it's on-demand unbounding. And last but not least, it's called restaking, which is very enchanting because it means you can use you one a serve of stake Bitcoin to stick it into multiple POS systems so that you can earn multiple yield. Yeah, so we achieve all these desirable and it's actually essential properties uh, for Bitcoin. So that Bitcoin, the most decentralized and the largest crypto asset, we are talking about 800 billion at the moment. So all 800 billion crypto asset can be used to secure the entire proof of stake world. Yeah, so yeah, we just uh, finished our fundraising. So we are expanding our our team and also 
building our ecosystem. We are hiring uh, yeah, talented pe uh, people to, uh, to our team. So product managers, engineers, community managers. Yes, yeah, so if you are interested, interested yeah, please shoot me an email. And in terms of ecosystem, we are onboarding validators to, to uh, validate our system. We are also looking for POS systems to try out BTC staking. We are also working with a wallet to uh, make BTC staking uh, accessible to more and more Bitcoin holders. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, um, Fisher. Yeah. And uh, next we have uh, DrawFi, uh, which is a, a private equity fund data platform with on-chain data supporting lending and the liquidity. So please raise your hand, Umar, so I can promote, or we can promote you to co-host. All right, you should be able, you should be able to unmute yourself and uh, share screen. Okay, sounds good. <clears throat> Let me know when you guys can see my screen. We got it. Got it. Okay. So you guys can see my screen? Yeah, we can see our screen. All right. Sounds good. <clears throat> hey, everyone. So um, my name is Kumar, and I'm the founder uh, CEO for uh, Dualfy. Uh, Dualfy is a RWA tokenization and fund data platform built for private equity and private market. Uh, some of the problems which we are trying to solve, I'll get into that. <clears throat> yeah, so <clears throat> this is our team. Uh, so myself, Kumar, uh, so this is my third venture. Most recently, I was a uh, punch, got uh, exit of 500 million. I have uh, two patterns in AI machine learning space and been working in hey, this. Kumar. Yep. Sorry, I hate to interrupt you, but it looks like your slides may not be advancing if you have indeed advanced your slide. Ah, okay. Oh, sorry. Let me quickly stop sharing. Okay. Just a minute, sorry. We're looking at your Chrome browser demo, and there's the team slide. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, uh, my co-founder Deepak, he has been uh, in infrastructure space for a long time. Most recently, he was at Citadel, worked on mostly in the high frequency trading infrastructure background. Uh, uh, been working with uh, uh, multiple team members. Right now, we have. Uh, Ali Nasser, who's running our uh, revenue. Uh, Alan, coming from the data science machine learning background, most recently was the uh, head of data science and machine learning at Nike. Uh, Nathan, coming from uh, DCG and real estate background in New York, uh, he's running our uh, BD. Uh, we have a great advisory team right now. Uh, David Ohm, coming from a PE background, worked for 25 years helping us to expand our uh, product into the international markets. Uh, Merrick, uh, CTO uh, for Cello, helped us a lot in the early stage. He's also an investor. Omkar, ex uh, Coinbase, he has also helped us in early stage and then uh, technical advisor to the team. Let me talk about the data. So what, what we are trying to solve. <clears throat> so tokenization uh, of RWA tokenization is, uh, has been done for a long time and uh, people are trying to use that uh, since 2016, but none of the uh, have been ever solved the real true problem from the tokenization. So why you do the tokenization? You do the tokenization of the asset, real world asset, to basically bring liquidity in the market, to bring uh, equity swap, these kind of things secondary. But generally, if you do a tokenization today, most of the product is hard to do that. And there's the reason behind that is the data. Because once, once you tokenize the asset, you're basically taking a slice of the data and then putting on 
in a, a separate bucket and then basically tokenizing it. But when you want to do any action on that data, you cannot do that because that token didn't have any metadata attached with that. And you have to go back to the front in a traditional way and bring that data back and which cripples the whole use case. So that is what we are solving. So what is our solution? The funded data platform. So what we do, how it works. So you build a data infrastructure platform, which basically sucks in all your data, fund related data uh, from any sources which you have today. We can plug in and get the data from that. In your public record, we can do that and we do it today. And once we did the data, we basically take those unstructured data and convert into structured format, perform the ETL, and then categorize the data into multiple uh, three categories. So one is the asset data, then fund performance data and G GPLP data. And then on top of that, basically we start, uh, we build up services on top of that. So your asset data gives you two types of uh, services, two types of products. One is your liquidity, on-demand liquidity and the equity swap. What is on-demand liquidity? You can basically think about it. You in a fund, you can borrow against your LP interest. That is, is enabled through this uh, product. Second, equity swap. If you want to, if you are in a fund and you have uh, invested in basically uh, your LP interest and you want to swap it with other LPs who are interested to do that, you can do that equity swap on this uh, platform. The second one is fund management service. So we basically bring entire fund management uh, stack on this platform so you can manage your fund end to end. And then on top of that, we have built an AI engine, Corsair engine, which basically queries this all data in a uh, private data environment so that you can basically take access of all the data in a more natural language query. So this is our uh, a product. So our product is basically, it's easy in life uh, demo of the product, but the, the way we are built is that a modular stack, which basically fits into the entire uh, stack into a one fund, or you can take it that uh, each stack and fit into wherever you want. And which basically allows us the nimbleness to take this module and fit into any uh, existing fund administrator, fund services, or any existing platform which works today. And they can leverage the, the value of our product. So where we are today, so this are, we started the year with a 10 million AUM asset data management on the platform. Uh, by the end of the year, we have $130 million asset on, on our platform today managed and uh, 480 plus LPs, and we are onboarding now 1,000 LPs, onboarding two more funds by Q1, which is taking us to $350 million, each $100 million, $150 million fund. We're enabling lending on the platform with a, a, a reputed uh, uh, institutional lender with a $25 million. Uh, these are a few of the customers that we are working with uh, today. And then now we are also expanding in global market so you see HANA Bank, we're working with them in the South Korea market to take this product for their STO security to division market. We're working with the uh, Indian uh, market with Sears One VC. We're working in Middle East market with ECG Invest and a bunch of other players. So now we are expanding globally. We're taking this product into the market. Uh, this is just the US TAM today, what you have, uh, you're looking at, which is $19 billion. Uh, per year. This is the revenue uh, by total foreign servicing platform of which exists today. And we're expecting to get a $27 million ARR by 2025 uh, based on this as we are growing. Uh, yeah, uh, right now we're basically closing our seed round. Uh, we have a term sheet. Anyone interested we would love to talk to them. And now I'll quickly show you the existing product. And uh, so, so uh, this is the existing product right now, which is live. And I'm giving you, I'm showing you an example of the product which is live on this one. So you see there's three products which is live uh, in this particular, uh, by this particular customer. And you can see that instantly this, this whole product is right now on chain. So you can let the Victor 16 note, which is this one, you can see that it's hold by nine addresses, means nine uh, equity holders are holding this assets and have done 20 transactions. And you'll see there's three three days back, they have done the transaction. Similarly, this is another example of Opportunity Fund 1, which is basically right now a $90 million uh, fund. You can see that 677 addresses, means 677 LPs in this fund 
and they have done 190 transactions. And you'll see that most recent transactions have been done recently. And you'll see these are the, all their operations. The people have been paid, uh, uh, the distribution and all happened. So you'll see all these transactions on the chain. So we are live and adding more and more fund and love to talk to anyone, any fund who's interested in uh, working with us in this market. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kumar. Uh, and next, we're going to uh, be switching to hearing from SafeChain, uh, which is a cross-border payment platform powered by Web3. Uh, Igor, uh, let me pin you. And I believe that's the correct one, yes? Yes. Yeah, I have two accounts for one for presentation and for demo. You're raising your hand for that one as well. Uh, okay, yeah. you're good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, so my name is Igor Kamel, I'm the founder of Safe Chain and also Star from GSB 2011. So Safe Chain is cross-border payment service platform powered by Web3. So our team is uh, consists of four of us in Ukraine. I'm originally Ukrainian, three in the US, and uh, Daniel, who is also on the call, he's in Mexico right now. And uh, we experience team in uh, basically in crypto and fintechs. So I'm doing financial technology since 2011. I was head of innovation lab, the biggest bank in uh, Russia back then, and then a serial entrepreneur made the 2017 top 20 initial coin offering in the world. We raised 70,000 ether back at that time. And uh, out of my team, there was new company started, uh, which as you probably know, it's uh, ZK Sync, Matter Labs guys. And uh, uh, I feel basically, I come back to US and started Safe Chain and invited my classmate to join. So we have like a strong engineering team. This guy sold his company uh, uh, all the way back to Google. And uh, we have David, who is our advisor and who is, uh, used to be the CEO of uh, Delta Bank, who is issuing Tether right now. So the problem we are solving is global. It's uh, basically a capital control. Uh, it's uh, problems with buying and selling USD in different countries. It's uh, serving on the bank people like over the world. So you're probably familiar with most of these problems. So uh, this problem, particularly, I, I made a calculation. So there is like 14 countries where uh, where is the uh, price arbitrage and USDT is, uh, is, is trading with the premium to official exchange rate is 2.6 billion dollar uh, people population. And this is all our basically address markets. In some countries it's up to 170% like Argentina premium. So our solution is uh, to build a payment service platform kind of similar to checkout.com uh, with uh, helping uh, businesses uh, to serve their clients and, and clients to on, on board with the businesses through stable coin rails. And the secret sauce is basically we're making our best to make it easy in terms of compliance and in terms of RAMs. So free uh, free RAMs, this is our goal. The, the solution has the free components. It's a wallet, it's a RAM hub and Savix card. Wallet is uh, non-custodial. MPC wallet, it's uh, not regulated. RAM hub, it's as I said, our goal is to make it free on cash-in. And uh, Savix card, it uh, uh, requires minimum KYC to open and global. So this is how this works in terms of compliance. So there is each country we have different ramps and we, we already signed up for the partnership with the Stripe and integrated them and BIM and BS and Coiva uh, in Latin America. Uh, so this is like uh, what exactly we are selling to our B2B customers. Each customer is a merchant and merchant has master wallet. Uh, his users have sub wallets, which is can pop up locally with our ramp hub. And from each uh, each sub wallet can issue the card connected to the wallet, and uh, uh, usually the customers they are based in some emerging markets like Argentina, Nigeria, others, and the merchants there in developed markets. So we are helping them uh, get paid from these countries where stable coins without SWIFT and uh, uh, or do mass payout opposite way or send funds to each other. So I want to do the demo right now. So I will share my second device. 
can enable. Uh, and you should have a share screen request from yes. Igor's second device. Uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think you should be good, try now. Yeah, you should be able to try now. Yeah, so basically this is the wallet that we built. Uh, it's kind of uh, similar to simplified version of Revolut or TransferWise. So you have a dollar accounts here. You can choose what country where you're based. We're supporting now US, Colombia, Chile, Peru, Mexico, and Argentina is coming soon. Each country you have your exchange rate for top up and withdrawal. So I will come back to yes right now. And uh, uh, basically, what you can do, you can uh, go, uh, you can open this wallet without KYC and uh, uh, then go for verification. Even without KYC, you have functionality for send. So if you want to top up the wallet, you can do it Polygon. It's in Polygon mainnet right now, or you can do with uh, uh, bank top up. So it's Stripe. So uh, it's Stripe, uh, they automatically, they will have a deep link and they remember basically uh, uh, they see my ID, they see my account. So I can do basically with two clicks top up the wallet. Yeah, so they already request me to top up. Okay, well, I will not show the full flow right now to save time. So uh, yeah. Uh, the send funds is going like uh, directly, same way as, as uh, PayPal or Venmo, to email to email. Email is connected to the wallet. If there if there are wallet that doesn't exist with this email, so we keep funds in escrow contract and wait to the recipient to open the wallet. The multi commission is waived since it's paid with us on the back, and uh, the current uh, we are waiting for current permission and going to my net. So you see the polygon scan this transaction. And uh, uh, finally, uh, we have the thing for, uh, uh, you can withdraw the private key from the application. So and open the same thing like a MetaMask or Trust Wallet. So this is the private key that you can copy. Yeah, and uh, finally, if you lost the phone, so the main problem, you, you can do chaos recovery. So you can just install the application, launch this again, plug in with the previous email. Yeah, and so I'm going to recover the center to recover my second share of the key to restore the whole private key. So it's the same, it's the password that was already saved on this device, but otherwise I would enter it. So I'm in the recovery center and this is what's happening, what's going on. on. So recovery share be downloaded from the server, see from Amazon Key Management Storage, recovered private key, regenerated all the free shares and uh, uploading. So the vault is recovered. So we are back. Right now, and we'll, we'll see the balance. Yeah, it's here. Okay. So this was the demo. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, thank you, guys. So uh, I have like a couple more slides. So uh, to make uh, uh, just a couple words about our go to market. In terms of go to market, we're going from B two B two C. So we are uh, we are first offering Tonki solutions to uh, in existing industries like uh, that have many users in place like remittances and uh, gambling, and then uh, we are getting users and um, volume that give us uh, to finance so subsidize BTC ramps and then we issue the card and uh, finally our plan is to do like a new bank. So it's strategy similar to PayPal how PayPal to go to the market first offering where payment on eBay. Yeah, and so right now we have like a number of leads. Our biggest leads coming from 
uh, money transfer, transfer, transfer operators in Central America and Sub-Saharan Africa. 600,000 users have our uh, prospects. And second type of leads going from the gambling operations, our prospect is master license operator in Canada, Tobacco Land, which is, has uh, 250 orders right now. And altogether, it's potentially 500 million in volumes uh, just for, them, for this operator. So our main competitive advantage, uh, and uh, we have prospective revenue for about 1 million, which is coming next year. Our main advantage that we are serving B2B uh, clients in their Web2 cases. So we're not really going after Web3 uh, clients as uh, all the competitors. We are mostly going after really real cases that exist in the market right now, like remittances or gambling, where like billions of dollars going back and forth for our rails, traditional rails, and we are offering uh, fiat rails yeah so uh we are uh, we are right now uh in the middle of closing our first uh, batch for two million dollars out of a million seat so uh, half of this uh, two million uh, pre-seed is uh, filled so interested uh, to talk please reach out and i will leave the link for the hack and for the better thanks a lot awesome thanks so much igor uh, excited to see uh, to see how much progress you've made and and the the application kind of live there. Uh, next, we have uh, William from RNSID, uh, who's going to talk to us about sovereign backed decentralized IDs. So, give us one second. There we go, uh, and. William, the floor is yours. Hello. Um, my topic today is a is a DID and a legal ID. So, uh, what are the challenging uh challenges for today's uh identity space? Uh, disjoint identity management process. You know where when you engage with like various the apps, uh, exchanges or banking financial institutions, you have to present them your ID each time you log into any one of them, and it typically takes them, um, you know, three days to a week to you know view all those documents, and also a variety of documents they may require. Uh, your ID, your proof of address, your um, like other identity related documents. And also, you know, you have to share with um, each of them your sensitive uh, information, right? You have to show them your ID, which shows everything, right? Your address, your uh, date of birth. Um, and sometimes you just don't have an option of not to. And um, completing KYC is, you know, the procedure is really long and repeated, uh, and also onboarding um, uh, times and uh, efficiency and um, AML checks for uh, for 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 different um, exchanges are different. So you have to do this like um, uh, repeatedly and uh, individually. So what we offer is a legal ID uh, from a small country uh, called Palau. So uh, what you can do is to, to apply for this digital residency program and a legal ID is, um, is issued, which looks like uh, this one on the screen. And you can use it for a variety of purposes, uh, including you know, sign up onto exchanges, uh, onto banking apps, uh, brokerage account. So it's also, you know, um, check into hotels, claiming boarding passes, a lot of traditional identity uh, use case. But what I want to present more today is about this LDID, the legal DID, as a ZK-based uh, verification where you can verify your identity at the same time you don't have to share things you don't want to share. Uh, okay, so 
yeah, about Pilates residency, I think there's has been plenty of of uh, media coverage. So it's you know just as I uh, I I describe, you can uh, you can use it for uh, normal identity verifications. I've used it at T-Mobile to open a, a phone number, uh, to check out at at, at CVS for uh, claiming, um, you know, uh, medications and also donating blood. Um, and we're not only offering um, identity, right? we're launching um, the Plow Land product, which allows you to have uh, a legal mail forwarding service. You know, whether you are digital nomad, wherever you are, you always have a global address that has a US zip code that you can use. And it offers, um, you know, like a proof, a proof of address portal where we can log into the state uh, website to generate a lease um, for your uh, proof of address uh, use cases. So uh, the legal DID is not just um, a um, blockchain uh, Palau ID. It also allows you to, uh, you know, change any of your existing uh, legal ID, like your uh, driver's license or your passport uh, into an on-chain version. And right now this is only available on, uh, on Ethereum. And the LDID advantage is, uh, you know, it's, it's a, first of all, it's a legal ID. And then it allows people, institutions to do zero knowledge verifications. It has open claims that doesn't have private information. For example, over 21 uh, jurisdiction US or jurisdiction, you know, like Argentina or, um, you know, uh, for sanction, true or false. And, you know, OFAC, AML check, true or false. So that allows institutions to uh, have, you know, to verify you without having to, to um, see your private information. And it also allows user to uh, collect or like selectively choose what kind of information to to expose. Right? They can turn this on, turn that off. So it's custom uh, customizable. Uh, I think I yeah we already exchanged this yeah okay so. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, an, an exchange that we're working with. So in the future, you're able to uh, verify with your legal DID instead of your, um, your uh, paper ID, right? So what you can do is to use your wallet to, uh, which carries your legal DID to uh, do KYC instead of like, you know, having to take pictures uh, do everything um, that's that's not necessary. Yeah. So about legal DID, there's no cost for um, for the exchanges, and you know they can just open their requirement like over twenty one jurisdiction, not US, and it's ZK verification. No, and also no charge. Uh, for KYC, that allows you uh, allows the uh, the exchanges with more requirements, right? They want to see actually if someone else is taking your wallet. So we also have that option to open your camera to verify if your face is actually the LDID that you claim to be. And the, there's API that you can integrate with, uh, and we have uh, twenty four seven customer support. Uh, tractions, uh, we have uh, Tim Dripper and Vitalik both uh, sign up for uh, RNS and Vitalik actually went to uh, Palau to launch the uh, legal DID with us and become the first uh, LDID holder. And we also, we cannot share the number of, of users so far, but we have uh, five digits of users from uh, 120 plus countries. Uh, paid users. Uh, we're hiring and also open to you know partnerships for you know with exchanges, banks, uh, financial institutions that you know we can bring our large numbers of trader community. Also, these are um, you know high net 
high net worth individuals or institutions that are you know VIP customers of like a lot of other exchanges. So yeah, this is a value prop, uh, proposition for uh, for our, for RNS. Thank you for listening. Awesome, William. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I love how much this like really bridges uh, Web two and Web three from an identity and wallet perspective and uh, kind of privacy preserving uh, KYC checking and and uh, interactions. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we will have uh, Ahmed from Otis. So give us one minute. Awesome. All right, the floor is yours, Ahmed. All right, thank you, Gail. And hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, staying until this time. Let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yeah, good. Yeah, sure. Great. So I'm um, Ahmed, co-founder and CEO of Odos. Uh, we are a startup based in Los Altos, California, 10 minutes from Stanford, and happy to present on behalf of the team here. Uh, so we are building an optimal uh, intent-based routing solution. And uh, let me explain that to you a little bit, but let's start with the problem that we are trying to solve. So if you're uh, hoping that uh, blockchain Web3 is going to be you know, consolidating, uh, you will be disappointed because fragmentation is increasing. Um, and new L1s, of course, L2s uh, are very vibrant. You know, there will be you know, maybe hundreds of L2s coming up, as people are expecting, and many app chains, etc. So And about that, of course, thousands of protocols with their tokens and hundreds of exchanges, millions of pools. So what that means that if you want to participate in Web3, if you want to participate in some protocol, most likely you need to exchange tokens. You need to swap tokens to you know, buy gas tokens or to you know, participate in DAOs or other DeFi platforms. You're always looking to exchange tokens. So with a fragmented liquidity, um, that means that uh, aggregating the liquidity and providing an optimal routing is essential no matter what you do. And this is going to uh, be the case uh, for a long time coming. So what we launched in early 2022 is a liquidity aggregator and smart order routing solution, uh, which is seen here. Uh, you might be very familiar with this uh, left-hand side swap window. You're going from one token to another. Uh, what we wanted to show to users is actually the power of the algorithm and intuitive way to show our order routing. If you want to swap, in this case, uh, ETH to wrap BTC, our algorithm is basically crafting the journey and optimizing uh, the best uh, output, uh, basically exchange rate for you. That means that we are splitting your order into different liquidity sources, different DEXs. And if there are uh, arbitrage opportunities between intermediary tokens, our algorithm is automatically capturing those and giving that back to the user. So uh, with that uh, launch, uh, we've achieved incredible adoption. Uh, since launch, uh, we've basically done more than 16 billion transaction volume and uh, grow our unique wallets more than a million at this point. And that's, uh, of course, due to all the chain expansions and the liquidity aggregations that we've been done. We are uh, the, one of the aggregators that has the most extensive on-chain liquidity coverage, more than 650 sources, more than anybody in this space. So that combines with the algorithm and the liquidity provides users with the best exchange rates. And currently the product is live on these nine chains that you're seeing, and we are always adding new chains and expanding to um, other uh, communities and platforms rapidly. So the algorithmic advantage is best seen with visualization. So this is what separates us from other DEX aggregators. Uh, unlike other aggregators, which are just splitting into uh, several DEXs, our algorithm is a true uh, smart order routing solution. On the left top side, you see an Odos uh, order routing visualization uh, versus some of the other uh, competitors in this space. And again, these Sankey charts show flow of funds from one asset into the, uh, another asset, and different colors are different liquidity sources. 
So when you compare ODOS's optimization route, you immediately see a very sophisticated order routing, uh, which doesn't actually compromise transaction costs. Our algorithm always optimizes for transaction costs and does not make the routing more complex unless it's worth to do it. And uh, with that uh, edge, we are seeing, uh, as I mentioned, incredible adoption during the bear market. We launched in the bear market and grow this user base from zero to now almost approaching 2 million. So we are incredibly proud of this achievement uh, that uh, our product has seen. And uh, moving forward, uh, we are uh, very interested in uh, going in the intent-based uh, direction because um, with the account abstraction and other developments in the Ethereum space especially, there is a, a big push to make it uh, a lot easier for users to participate in DeFi. So rather than a transaction-based systems that we see today where users are signing every transaction, they are estimating gas costs, they are looking for the best platform, users actually would like to define their goals, their intents, and uh, most users don't want to deal with all these uh, complications. So intent-based marketplaces such as Uniswap, X, CowSwap, and very soon Odos is going to enable that, giving users a more you know, straightforward, uh, smooth experience. We are also participating in these uh, intent-based marketplaces such as uh, Uniswap, X, and very soon on, on CowSwap, but most importantly, with our um, adoption, we are going to be launching our own intent uh, products very soon. So that means that in terms of business model and monetization, Odos algorithm and liquidity aggregation will be at the center where we will be capturing order flow, uh, order flow from our own products, intent-based products, as well as from external marketplaces such as Uniswap X, CowSwap, and others that are coming. And uh, this is all, of course, achieved with a great team. Uh, this is some of the other, uh, uh, basically, team members who are not here. But um, we are a team uh, coming with different backgrounds, mostly technological uh, technology space. I myself uh, came from IBM Research, uh, more than a decade experience at IBM, uh, ranging from semiconductors to AI. And uh, we are also hiring, uh, and if you're in, anybody in the audience is interested, we are looking for cloud engineers as well as data architects to grow this team uh, much further. And uh, we are in the middle of a fundraise and targeting the end of this month to finalize the interest. The round is a little over half full, so if you're interested in participating, uh, we would like to know your interest and participation level uh, by the end of this month, if possible. And with that, uh, here is my contact information. You can scan this QR code to set up a meeting with the investment team, or you can email myself and my Telegram ID is also here. And uh, thank you very much for listening. Awesome. Ahmed, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it. Um, really excited by all the traction, what this means for intent uh, kind of in general and seeing how, uh, how nuanced and dynamic uh, kind of we're getting here. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, really appreciate it. Again, I think we kept almost everyone for the entire time, including the transition. Uh, we urge you again, if you are a founder or considering you be a founder, uh, please apply to our cohort five uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Stephen has just put a link in the chat here, as well as if you want to continue to be part of our, our events. We have regular events. We've got a few exciting ones planned for January. Please subscribe to our mailing list uh, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you all.